So good evening, everybody. Um, and uh, thank you for having me here. I am so happy to be with you. I can see some familiar names and familiar faces in the chat box and um, in the gallery. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I am I feel very blessed to be with you this evening to be giving you this session. Our set, uh, this is session number three of our new evangelization conference. And the title of this session is um, Live Christ, Share Christ at the Cutting Edge of New Evangelization. And so basically, the whole point of, um, of this session is to present the unique selling point of LCSE as a program for evangelization. As we go out there carrying LCSE into the world, we need to understand what sets it apart so we can champion it in a time such as this. As Dylan shared with you a while ago, as Brother Dylan sh shared with you a while ago, LCSC has become uh, a movement in the Philippines that works tirelessly in re-evangelizing lapsed Catholics. And um, we heard about this yesterday. We heard about our call that each baptized person is called to evangelize. But LCSC specifically is a movement with the mission to re-evangelize those who are already baptized. First off, for us to understand what does this mean, let's look at the, the title of this session, which is cut the, At the Cutting Edge of New Evangelization. Um, when we say cutting edge, okay, it means at the least or most advanced stage of development, innovative or pioneering cutting edge technology. According to the Urban Dictionary, it is when, some, when something is cutting edge, it is at the current limits of scientific, technological, artistic progress, the newest and most advanced. So we are not saying that this is the only, the only program that uh, works towards new evangelization. But what we are trying to say here is we are blessed because we have this, um, this mission. We have been called in our community to, to work specifically for new evangelization. And it's cutting edge because it's um, it's so simple. It it, it I believe um, this uh, method, this approach, has been has been here for such a long time already, and yet it's new. It's simple. It it's uh, traditional, and yet it's new, because it's a new way of looking at things. It's a new approach for something that is already or some the something that we've already been used to. What is new evangelization? Okay, so let's begin to understand what is new evangelization. Saint, for St. Saint John Paul II, new evangelization is preaching to those Christian communities who have lost a living sense of the faith or even no longer consider themselves members of the church and live a life far removed from Christ and his gospel. It was in 1983 when St. John Paul II used the term, uh, first used the term, new evangelization. He was a, it was a theological concept of proclaiming the gospel anew to those who are already evangelized. And he used this in his address to the Catholic bishops of Latin America in Haiti. So specifically, St. John Paul II tells us that New evangelization is actually like re-evangelization. So these are um, uh, uh, renewing, renewing the faith of those who are already baptized in the faith but have somehow gone lukewarm in their faith. Perhaps they have experienced um, uh, uh, they've experienced a spiritual dryness in their faith and uh, don't find enough motivation anymore to live out their lives um, enthusiastically or to, to allow the spirit to move, to be vibrant in their own lives. We see a rise of the nuns in our culture today. What are the nuns? Okay, The nuns refer to the people who um, 
say that they have no faith in particular. They are those who have, uh, they are called irreligious, okay? Those who have been secularized, but not just secularized, but they think that religion is something that they can reject. They think that it's something that they can do without. And in the world today, there, are, there seems to be more and more people who consider themselves as none. We face a serious crisis and abandonment of faith because of this. In fact, here in the Philippines, there, uh, who, which is a largely Catholic country, okay, there is actually a bill in Congress that is waiting to be reviewed and passed. And this bill specifically says that um, crucifix, the crucifix or a cross should not be placed in classrooms or hospitals or or such public places, okay? Uh, the, the, the lawmaker who has proposed this bill is obviously not Catholic, but he says he, he is, he's um, bold enough to say that we don't need to practice our Catholic faith in a largely Catholic country. And I know, of course, that this is different in, in India since um, India is not... Uh, uh, majority of the population is not Catholic. But um, despite that, things have changed in India through the years and we can, in fact, um, freely profess our faith and live out our faith. And uh, in fact, we can also um, freely evangelize others. But the problem here that we are seeing is that even those who have been baptized in the faith have also become lukewarm when it comes to their faith. When we talk about new evangelization, we talk about a renewal of heart, mind, and spirit to those who have already been baptized in the faith but have somehow lost, lost the, um, the fervor and the passion to live their lives according to God's plan. St. John Paul II um, himself said, okay, in uh, Redemptoris Misho, I sense that the moment has come to commit all of the church's energies to a new evangelization and to the mission agentes. No believer in Christ, no institution of the church can avoid this supreme duty to proclaim Christ to all peoples. Do you believe that as a baptized Catholic, you are in fact called to evangelize others? Some of us think that the evangelization role, okay, the, the role to evangelize or to proclaim the faith is only um, for the priests or the nuns or those who are um, wildly radical about their faith. Uh, the truth is, once you are baptized, you are um, called to evangelize others. That is your mission as a baptized Catholic. So what then becomes of those who are baptized Catholics who don't even share the word of God, but also do not practice the word of God? These are the people who reject religion, who feel that they are not affiliated with any religion. These are the people who think that, um, whose thinking begin and end with themselves alone. These are the people who say that what is most important is their own opinion. Everything is self-generated, self-determined, and uh, even truth and morality um, does not depend on the divine law or the moral truth. Truth and morality, they say, depends on their own opinion, and it ends there. They have no regard for what has been uh, tried and tested through the years, what has been established because of our Catholic faith. Okay. Pope Benedict himself also, uh, in his Verbum Domini, said that, Our own time then must be increasingly marked by new hearing of God's word and a new evangelization. Recovering the centrality of the divine word in the Christian life leads us to appreciate anew the deepest meaning of the forceful appeal of Pope John Paul II to pursue the mission agentes and vigorously 
to embark upon the new evangelization. Especially in those nations where the gospel has been forgotten or meets with indifference as a result of widespread secularism. What has happened in, in most countries all over the world? A lot of people feel that they cannot profess their faith. They, they're shy to even just make the sign of the cross. When I, was a, when I was a child, I was taught that if I pass a church, I'm, I'm not sure if this was taught to you when you were children, no? but um, when I was a child, I was taught that when I pass by a church, I should make the sign of the cross to acknowledge that I am passing by a holy place. And I don't know why growing up, I got used to that. But when I became more aware of my peers and their reaction, I started feeling ashamed of doing that. Why is that? And it's something that I see in most young people. Of course, I've corrected that notion already since then. But um, it's something that I see among young people as well, that even just the sign of the cross is something that they're ashamed to do. Why is that? In nations where the gospel has been forgotten, where people um, tend to forget that God is the supreme being and God is the source of all life, when people tend to dismiss um, the word God even, um, it seems that people become ashamed of proclaiming their faith. And this is what new, evangeliz new evangelization is about. This is what LCSC is about. And we are at the forefront of that kind of work. How to re-evangelize those who are already evangelized. Most of the time, these are the people who will be harder for us to convince. Because they've already been there. They've already done that. Sometimes the people who are not yet um, uh, oriented in the Catholic faith, they are the ones who will be easier for us to talk to, easier for us to proclaim our faith, to profess our faith. Those who are lapsed Catholics will be more will be more difficult to convince to go back to the church because they're going to say that I know exactly what you're talking about. I already know what you're going to say. You don't need to talk to me about it anymore. All right. So what is LCSC? What is unique about LCSC? What is unique about who we are and about what we do? LCSC or Live Christ, Share Christ is raised by the Holy Spirit. We believe that Live Christ, Share Christ is a mission raised by the Holy Spirit and animated by the spirituality of the Pentecost. Here in the Philippines, we usually hold the New Evangelization Conference during Pentecost because it, we believe that we are animated by the spirituality of the Pentecost. When we were empowered by the Holy Spirit, when the church was born. And this is the, this is the, the symbol that we anchor the work of LCSE on, that we have been empowered by God and by Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And because of the, it is because of that Spirit that we are moved to evangelize and to re-evangelize. In fact, brothers and sisters, all the work that has happened for the past almost 10 years, LCSE will be on its 10th year next year. For the past almost 10 years of LCSC, um, everything that has happened, the growth in LCS engagements, and LBS hubs. Um, I'm not sure if you have been oriented about the LBS hubs, but here in the Philippines, the LBS hubs are mainly growing because of the young professionals. They go to coffee shops. Um, they go to um, they go to restaurants, and they talk about the Bible. They talk about uh, they do the they conduct the liturgical Bible study in these places. They just look like a bunch of young people having fun, having a, a very serious conversation. Nobody asks them to leave. And they talk about God. They talk about the Word of God. And surprisingly, this has grown. Before, you would think that people will find it too boring to talk about the Bible or to talk about the readings, the Sunday readings. But the Holy Spirit has, 
has empowered these young people and it has taken a life of its own. So many people are looking for these LBS hubs. And now that, um, now that uh, we are on quarantine, the LBS hubs continue virtually. And these, um, because of this, people from different uh, geographical areas converge and meet in one online uh, hub and discuss the Word of God, prepare for the Sunday's readings. Also, the conferences that have happened so far, um, conducted by some of the pillars of uh, LCSC, such as Live Pure and Live Life. The conferences have been attended by so many people. Um, Live Pure has been having the, their Live Pure conference yearly, and thousands of young people gather for this, uh, for this event. And Live Life started their own symposium this year, which is an online symposium. And um, we were able to coordinate and gather the different pro-life movements in the country, not just in MFC, not just in LCSC. And we were able to invite speakers to, to, um, to enlighten the participants about the different pro-life issues. How beautiful this work has become because it has allowed us to work with other people, to work with and partner with other people regardless of their community or their affiliation. This has allowed us to work together in unity because we have one God. We are working for one God and we are empowered by the same spirit. How beautiful that, that uh, the first ever online new evangelization conference here in the Philippines that happened this year um, aroused interest in thousands, thousands of participants that they're asking for LBS hubs in their areas. They're asking for um, chastity forums. They're asking for the Live Life Forum. They're asking for the health program to go there. You know, it's, it, it, has, uh, uh, it has raised so much interest in people who we have not met, people who are not even part of community. And this is what LCSC is being called to do. And now we're having this new evangelization conference in India. How beautiful, um, how beautiful the work of the Holy Spirit is. And it is moving all of us. And this is what is unique about LCSC. What we do is divine work. And just like how the apostles at Pentecost were transformed from being fearful to courageous disciples, this is the same life-changing work of the Holy Spirit. And this is happening to us. And it is empowering people all over the world. One manifestation that this is the work of the Holy Spirit, one other manifestation is our ability to be able to partner, as I've mentioned, with other people. And it is an opportunity to preach beyond the limitations of our community. We are becoming like St. Paul. We're actually preaching to the Gentiles. I'd like to share with you a Bible verse, John chapter 3, verse 8, and it says, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. LCSC is about being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we believe that each one of us, because we are baptized, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We just need to activate the Spirit in us. We just need to activate the work of the Holy Spirit in us. And once it happens... We go where the wind blows. The word wind and spirit is the same in Greek. So we go where the spirit goes. We do not know until when we do not know until when we are going to do this, but so long as we are affirmed that we are anointed by God today, we will make ourselves available by the power of the Holy Spirit. LCSC or Live Christ Share Christ mainstreams lay Catholic evangelization. In LCSC, we're all about lay empowerment. Of course, we work with the clergy. We work with the priests. We work with the nuns. We work with the different religious orders and congregations. We work with the diocese and priests, the parishes. But it's also mostly about lay empowerment. This is for the church and by the church. And when we talk about the church, we're not just talking about the priests and religious. We are talking about the people who make up the church, the church with a capital C, not the structure, but the body of people, the church of Christ, the kingdom of God. 
We are the body of Christ and we are essential. The Lord counts on us to play our part. In a way, we are igniting the missionary zeal of people. Who will, uh, um, Brother Frank Padilla, our, our uh, servant general himself said, our part is to respond to God's call and then to give our all. We who are nothing can be something in God's hands. We who are weak can be strong in the power of his spirit. The fruit is up to God. So we are here to work. We are here to be the hands and feet. If you are familiar with the song, Send Me Out, I want to be your hands and feet. I want to be your voice every time we speak. Because we are the, we, the Lord is counting on us to be his body here on earth and to work towards the, um, uh, to work empowered by the Spirit towards the proclamation of our faith, of his good news, of his word to others, especially to those who have heard it already, but have somehow decided to not live by it. Imagine, why are you in community today? Because somebody took the time to evangelize you. And um, for some of us, perhaps um, some of us may not have been baptized before joining community, but most of us are already baptized Catholics. And yet, we needed, we needed community to empower us even more. We needed the experience of community to be re-evangelized even more. The Lord is calling us, the Lord is calling us to reach out to the lapsed Catholics. The Lord is calling us to respond to his call because he wants every one of us to be with him in eternal life, in eternal happiness, eventually. When the time comes, he doesn't want to leave anybody behind. We all need to be as outstanding as St. Paul to do our part right where we are. There are many ordinary day-to-day -day laborers for the kingdom. And as lay people, we understand what those around us are going through. And it is from this perspective that we proceed in what we can do for the kingdom. Who will know what marriages and families need except for those who are also married, those who are also living family lives, right? Who will know what these lapsed Catholics need? Perhaps they're lapsed Catholics because they experience some trauma or something in their lives that have prevented them or hindered them from living out their lives as good Catholics. Who will know where they are coming from if not for us, if not the lay people? We are called to seek everybody. We are called to the last, the lost, and the least. Who do you think are the last, the lost, and the least? These are the people who are most vulnerable in society. They are the ones who need God now more than ever. They may not realize it. They may not realize it that the, the hunger that they are feeling is not simply physical hunger, but spiritual hunger. And who will bring this to them? For, for a lot of these lapsed Catholics, they are allergic to go back to church. For a lot of these Catholics, um, these lapsed Catholics, they run away when they see a priest. They know exactly what the priest is going to say. And, they have, and they're, they're cynical when it comes to people preaching to them. But when these are fellow lay people, people normal regular people who they meet every day, Perhaps they will listen to them more. Perhaps they will give them a chance to speak because they, don't, they wouldn't know that, um, that, uh, you, that you would be the one to bring them back to church. They, they might think that you're only talking to them about regular things. And they will listen to you more. They will pay attention to you more. We need to reach out to those whose faith life has been largely eroded and even lost because of what has happened to the world today. What has probably happened, why, the, why these people have lapsed in their faith? Perhaps there's confusion. Perhaps they're living in the world and seeing the moral relativism of the world. That everything that is true is dependent upon you, what you think is true. 
and not what is the absolute truth. Not what is truth, beauty, and goodness according to God, according to our Creator. Perhaps they're going through some kind of doubt, agnosticism. Perhaps they have dif- drifted away from the faith and the church and have, re- and have joined other religious sects. Our focus is on re-evangelizing nominal, cultural, and lapsed Catholics and bringing them back to Christ to an active life in the parish. How many of the people in your parish do you know who are actively serving in church? What is the percentage of people whom you know who are actively serving in the parish? How many do you know who just go to church for the sake of saying that they are going to church? These are called Sunday Catholics. They go to church on Sundays. They fulfill their obligation and then leave. For some of them, they just stay outside. Well, before the pandemic, at least, um, before the quarantine, the church would be filled to the brim. But how many of those who are inside are actually listening during the homily? Um, it's almost Christmas. And here in the Philippines, we have a tradition wherein we have uh, what we call the dawn mass. It's mass at 4 a.m., and it's celebrated every day, nine days before Christmas Day. And it's like a novena, novena dawn mass. And every time, every year, the church is spilling because of people who want to attend mass and complete the nine-day novena. But everybody outside, they're not paying attention. They're just there because they're meeting up with their friends or just for the sake of saying that they completed the nine-day novena. But are they actually there because they want to experience the Lord? Are they actually there because they want to be enriched and nourished by the Word of God? A lot of the Catholics that we encounter don't anymore have this personal relationship with the Lord. And that's what we are being called to do to help others see that they can do something about their faith. Their faith should not stay stagnant. Their faith should move and grow. That is what we are being called to do. And what is unique about what we do? What is unique about who we are? What are our best practices that draws our audience to us? LCSC is guided by the spirit of New evangelization. Pope Benedict XVI clarifies that new evangelization is actually not new, not in its content. We are not preaching a totally new kind of teaching. It's the same, but rather it is a new kind of approach, new in its methods that must correspond to the times, and new because it is necessary to proclaim the gospel to those who have already heard it. Look to, the fu- uh, look to the future with commitment to a new evangelization, one that is new in its ardor, new in its methods, and new in its expression, said St. John Paul II in his address to the Latin American bishops. So basically, what we are doing now, um, who would have thought that we would be having such a conference um, with 145 people in Zoom at a time like this where the speaker will be in the Philippines. Okay, for, for those of you who do not know, I was um, blessed to have and honored to have had the experience of going on mission to India in 2005. And just earlier this afternoon, when I was reflecting, it's been 15 years since I've set foot uh, in India. And uh, that's why I'm wearing this, you know, so I, to commemorate the 15 years. But who would have thought? And, and of, I've always had this prayer. I'm asking the Lord, when would, when would the time come when I can go back when I, with, my, with my husband, with my daughter, when I can speak to the people that I met and encountered when I was in India 15 years ago? And I'm doing that now. I'm doing that now in the comfort of my own home. 
the Lord calls us to continue the work of evangelization and to be empowered despite our circumstances. He says, do not be limited. He wants us to not be limited by our circumstances because the work continues. The work continues. Evangelization is not new, but the method and approach should be made more relevant to our times, to the times now. And that is what LCSE is about. For many young people, the church is slowly becoming irrelevant. Faith is a, a private and personal matter. Grace and truth proclaim the truth to the young in their own language without watering down the message. This is what the Live Pure movement and Live Life have been responding to. Okay, If the young people see that the church is irrelevant, let's try to show them that it is not. By speaking in their language without watering down the message of faith that we want them to hear. Evangelization occurs more, more effectively that way because the church engages in the culture of those that she evangelizes. If the apostles before did not think of translating the faith to the different cultures that they went to, we would not be talking about this now. We would not be renewed. We would not be Christians if they did not consider translating their faith. Okay? St. Thomas, the apostle, went to India himself. He went to Kerala, right? And if he did not do that, if he did not translate his faith to the people whom he encountered, we will not be talking about this. We will not be Catholics. So every time we are called to evangelize, we are called to translate the gospel of Christ because the message stays the same, but we need to be able to translate this according to the culture and to the times that we are in. When translation takes place, we intentionally build bridges of cultural understanding but retain our prophetic voice in the marketplace of ideas. How beautiful that we are called to do this. How beautiful that we are called to look to the future and to be able to continue, continue to share the word of God no matter the circumstances, no matter the medium. The message stays the same. In doing so, we're actually accompanying individuals on their own journey of faith from this life to eternal life. Always remember that our goal is for everyone to reach heaven. Our goal is not just to be right. Our goal is to love. And when we love others, that means we want them to experience eternal happiness as well. And that's why we are doing this. That's why we are being moved to evangelize, to re-evangelize. Because in the process, we ourselves become holier. We ourselves are refined. Our hearts and our intentions are purified. And isn't that beautiful? If all of us will end up in God's embrace, if all of us will end up in God's eternal happiness. LCSC is holistic in its mission. LCSC brings all people back to Christ. LCSC allows us not just to feel good about ourselves, but to proclaim the truth that everyone needs to hear. What makes this work holistic is that when we proclaim the good news, we desire for this new to be appropriated in their lives, which can lead to their conversion. People might be going through different, um, different circumstances. That's why we need to help them see how beautiful the Lord's plan is for them. LCSC leads people to an authentic encounter with Jesus Christ. At the heart of what we do is what we provide, a space and an opportunity for people to encounter Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, there's no single, single formula meant for all circumstances and for all people. And so in all things that we do in LCSC, what we aim for is for a personal profound experience of God. 
each time that we do LCSC work, we look at the circumstances. How do we proclaim the message of the Lord in the medium that is most effective to the people who will be hearing it, who need to hear it? We fight for the truth that Jesus Christ really does offer true freedom, a freedom that comes only from Him. Brothers and sisters, when I first um, learned that I would be sent to India, okay, when I first learned that I would be sent to India, I felt scared, I felt anxious, and I felt uncertain. I did not know what was in store for me. That was the first time that I would go on an international flight by myself because my partner then, um, Brother Butch, already went ahead. Okay, He had been there for a month before I traveled to India. So I was scared. I didn't know what was in store for me. I did not know what God had called me to do. To do. I just knew that he was going to send me there. Um, a lot of my relatives who had not heard about mission work that being done by lay people then, a lot of them thought that I was just going to India for a vacation. But when they heard that I would be there for at least six months, they were like, why? Why are you going to India? What's there to see? I mean, do you know anybody in India? Are you going to visit anybody there? Of course, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody there. And the first, the, the first, um, of course, I, I passed through Mumbai, but I stayed there for a night. But the next day, I immediately went to Goa. And the moment I arrived in Goa, I went straight to a meeting with all my bags and everything. And it was raining. It was June. So it, the moon, monsoons were, it was a, season of monsoons and I was wet and everything but I had to go straight to a meeting and in my mind I was like what am I doing here why am I here and what am I being called to do Lord what is your plan okay I I did not know what the Lord's plan was and in fact I I could feel I could feel tension when I would be there and speaking in front of people I I was so um insecure I, I, was, I, I was so unsure of myself. But one thing that I knew the Lord told me every time I would go home and pray, the Lord would tell me, I'm going to, I'm going to empower you. I am going to be with you. You are going to experience my love here. I did not go to India to teach what I knew. That was not the reason why. And in fact, I thought that I was going there to, to share what we needed to share from the Philippines, okay? To, to help them with, you know, doing events or conducting pastoral work with the ministries. I had, I had those ideas. We had our training and everything. But all of that went away when I reached India. I was, my mind was a blank. Why am I here? What am I doing here, Lord? And the Lord just continued to affirm me every day through every person that I met, through every meeting that we had, every encounter that I had. And all that I could think of was the Lord was meeting me through so many people in different faces, in different, um, in, through different cultures. I was so privileged to be there. I was so blessed that I was able to visit Bom Yesu in Goa to see St. Francis Xavier. And I was able to visit the tomb of St. Teresa in, in Calcutta. And who would have thought that I would be able to experience that? For me, the Lord was talking to me. And the Lord was making me feel His love through that mission. By saying yes, by doing the work of the Lord, He will not just use us, but He will also nourish us. Little do we know that we need this. It is us who needs this work because God will enrich us and speak to us through this work. There is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of, uh, the, the Lord is going to do a lot of things in you, brothers and sisters. The Lord is going to empower you to do so many things through this work by, by allowing him to empower us through this work and by allowing him to use us in this cutting edge new evangelization work that is LCSC the Lord will enrich you 
and the Lord will make you feel loved. This, then, is the Live Christ, Share Christ mission. It is intended for Catholics to meet Christ, to live Christ, and to share Christ. It is designed for rapid and massive evangelization, accompanied by the systemic empowerment of lay people to participate in the work. We hope that through this movement, the Church will be able to mainstream Catholic lay evangelization, and we can freely talk about our faith without being ashamed. We can talk, and, and it's going to sound so cool, not the other way around. It's not going to sound corny or, or you know, um, uh, corny. <laughs> it's not going to sound that way. It's going to sound so cool because we're going to see it in a different light. And we need you. We need people to be able to do this work because somebody somewhere needs to hear this. You don't know who that person is. That may be the person in your office or in your community, in your church, your family member. We don't know. But we should just allow ourselves to be used in this way. In this way, Catholic Church in the Philippines truly became a missionary church because of this call. And I do hope that this will also be um, phenomenal when it comes to um, doing missionary work in India. I remember talking to the head of the Society of Divine Word, SVD, um, many years ago. And he told me that SVD started out as a European, um, European uh, congregation. But now, the, the priests, SVD priests, the top three nationalities of SVD priests all over the world are Filipinos, Indonesians, and Indians not in any particular order. We are being called to do God's work to the ends of the earth. I believe that we are being called to do this no matter the circumstance. Let us look at the words of Pope Benedict XVI. He said, Dear friends, being evangelizers is not a privilege, but a commitment that comes from faith. Thus, I ask you to let yourselves be formed by God's grace and to respond in docility to the action of the Spirit of the Risen One. Be docile to the Spirit. Be signs of hope. Communicate the joy of faith to all with the enthusiasm that comes from being driven by the Holy Spirit because He makes all things new, trusting in the promise that Jesus made to the church. And I am with you always to the end of time. Brothers and sisters, let us be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. Let us be discerning people of God and allow Him to use us to evangelize others. I do hope that we can see the Live Christ, Share Christ mission as a tool in this cutting edge of new evangelization. May God be praised. Thank you very much.